Welcome back. Now that we have an understanding of EKG paper, or EKG strips, big boxes, small boxes, that kind of thing, we can start talking about a quick and easy way to determine the heart rate of an EKG strip. Well, we have an EKG paper underneath me here. It's marked off in one second. We have a one second section. We have a three second section. And we've got small and big boxes down below. Let's assume that we have a strip going along like this and a QRS happens right here. And the next one happens right here. Let's count the big boxes and see how far apart they are. So we have one, two, three, four, five big boxes apart. Five times 0.2, which equals one second. The heartbeats are happening one second apart. This one's going to be pretty easy, isn't it? If the heart rates are happening one second apart, then they're happening 60 times per minute, which means if the QRSs are five big boxes apart over here, our heart rate is 60 beats per minute. Now what would it be if it came along here and QRS here and here and every big box we have another QRS. Well, let's see, that means they're happening every 0.2 seconds. That would mean they're happening five times per second. And if there are 60 seconds in a minute, they're happening 300 times per minute. So up here, we can say if the QRSs are consistently one box apart, the heart rate is 300 beats per minute. What if, coming across here, we have a QRS here, and now the next one is two big boxes away, and they're consistently two big boxes apart. Well, if they're two big boxes apart, that means they are half the frequency of one box apart. They're twice as slow. So instead of 300 beats per minute, if they are two boxes apart, we can say that the heart rate is 150 beats per minute, or half the heart rate of one box per minute. What if they're three boxes apart? Consistently three boxes apart. Well, that would mean they're three boxes apart. That would be one third of one box apart. So instead of 300 beats per minute, we would have 100 beats per minute. How about if they are four boxes apart? So we have one here, two, four here, two, four here, two, four here. Well, if they're four boxes apart, that would be half the speed of two boxes apart. So it'd be half the heart rate. So instead of 150, we would have 75 beats per minute. And last but not least, what if they were six boxes apart? So if we have one here, and then two, four, six, and event, two, four, six, and another one, two, four, six, and another one. Okay, if there's six boxes apart, consistently six boxes apart, that would be half of three boxes apart, or half of 100 beats per minute, or 50 beats per minute. So we have these six numbers, 300, 150, 175, 60, 50. Please commit these to memory because if we want to know how far apart these are in time, what the heart rate is for this, the way to do it would be for us to count from here we go 300, 150, 100, 75, 60, 50. So this one is 50 beats per minute. 
If we looked at this EKG, we would use the same method and we would count 300, 150, 100. This one is 100 beats per minute. Again, it depends on us memorizing these numbers. 300, 150, 100, 75, 60, 50. Now you may ask, what if it's slower than six boxes? And at that point, because we're beyond 50 beats per minute, we know that that is cutting into cardiac output. We can just say, it's slow, it's too slow and we need to do something about that. Or what if it's above 300? And you're really not gonna find any rhythm above 300. The only thing that could be above 300 beats per minute is ventricular fibrillation. And if the patient's in V-fib, our decisions are already made for us. It really doesn't matter if they're in 314 or 382, our treatment is going to be the same. So again, please memorize these numbers of the 300 method. 300, 150, 100, 75, 60, and 50.